Well, tonight's case from the text files takes us to downtown Dallas, the most visited spot in the city. A place steeped in controversy and historical debate, Dealey Plaza and the Grassy Knoll. Well, I think the Grassy Knoll is a mystery to everybody. You could probably go anywhere in the world and say Grassy Knoll and people know exactly what you're talking about. Three million visitors a year seek out this little hill with the picket fence on top. This haunted place overlooking the street where President Kennedy was shot. It's now to the point where Grassy Knoll represents intrigue and mystery, whereas it was just a name coined by one of the uh, reporters in the motorcade. have not been here to the grassy knoll uh -huh. in uh, 20 years. Uh -huh. Newsman Kent Biffle was there that day on the tail end of the motorcade. He ran up on the shooting scene and then followed the crowd. Most people seem to think that shots coming from up here. In fact, the witnesses and were split. So the majority I... told of hearing three shots from the school leave. book depository building behind the president. But more than 50 witnesses said they thought there was gunfire from somewhere in front. Film records clearly show many of them running in that direction toward what a wire reporter would later dub the grassy knoll. None of them found anything, which means either nothing was there, or if someone was there, he got away. At the time of the assassination, I was there. Kent Biffle says once he got over the fence, he did encounter three men he took to be winos or hobos. And I walked up to one, and I said, what happened? And he looked at me, and he said, what happened? So I know I was in the wrong place. He didn't know any more than I did. For decades, those three hobos were part of the mystery. Photographs show them in police custody, but they were quickly released, and no record of their arrest could be found. Conspiracy theorists were convinced that they were part of the plot until 1992 when two filmmakers from Dallas, Ray and Mary LaFontaine, found the lost arrest records in unsealed Dallas City files. Two of the three hobos were still alive. They were located, interviewed, and quietly dismissed from conspiracy theories. That's a great example of one of the questions that has been answered, the famous or infamous tramps. But other questions go unanswered. Ed Hoffman, a deaf man, then living in Dallas, has long claimed he saw a man in a business suit fire a rifle from behind the fence of the grassy knoll and then toss it across the tracks to another man in a railroad suit. Another witness was standing here on the triple overpass and claimed to see a puff of smoke from the grassy knoll as shots were fired. A photograph taken that day has been endlessly enlarged and analyzed, and in it, in the bushes, some people see a policeman-like figure. They call him the badge man. Others look at the same photograph and see nothing at all. But it all adds to the legend and the mystery of this otherwise unremarkable place. Officer Smith was in the intersection of Elm and Houston. For Gary Mack, archivist at the Sixth Floor Museum and a longtime Kennedy researcher, another man's story from the grassy knoll raises more intriguing and still unanswered questions. A 31-year-old police officer named Joe Marshall Smith, who was directing traffic at the intersection of Elm and Houston. When the shots were fired, he thought they might have come from this direction. When a woman said they're shooting the president from the bushes, the only bushes he could see from there were down here. So he came running down the street here, and he's all by himself. There are no police anywhere in this area. And he rounds the corner, and the first thing he sees is a man over here dressed in a suit who flashes Secret Service credentials. Now, Smith rounds the corner with his gun drawn, and this guy holds out ID, which Smith recognized, and just let him go. The problem is the Secret Service did not have anyone on the ground at any time before, during, or after the assassination. The Secret Service men were in the motorcade. They stayed with the motorcade. So who was this guy? Nobody knows. The Warren Commission had Joe Smith's testimony, but never followed up on the question of the Secret Service agent who wasn't there, or other issues Officer Smith raised. One of the things he mentioned was uh, when he got down to the Grassy Knoll area was that he smelled gunpowder. Well, the Grassy Knoll area is far away from the book depository. You shouldn't smell gunpowder down there unless there was a gun. 
Well, all this must have happened pretty quickly because I got back in time here to go in with the first wave of, of police into the into this building, the school book depository building. A TV photographer also got in before the building was sealed off, capturing a brief image of Kent Biffle, looking shocked by what had happened. Minutes later, Biffle was on the sixth floor when the assassin's rifle was discovered under a box near a corner window. You could see the butt plate sticking out on one end of the box and the muzzle on the other. Did this man killed the president? Kent was also there when police captain Will Fritz first heard the name of a suspect. Roy Truly, who was the manager of the school book depository building, came in and told Captain Fritz, we've had a roll call of our employees and one is missing, Lee Oswald. Other officers were still at work in the parking lot and the rail yard near the grassy knoll. It's a matter of record that several Dallas police officers stayed in the parking lot area, checking all the cars as they left, writing down license plate numbers. There are photographs of them doing that, compiling a list. The list has vanished. There is no list. What keeps this mystery churning away is the fact that there are loose ends out there. So was there a gunman on the grassy knoll? And, uh, Kent Biffle thinks not. Bundled together neatly, there will always be, be questions. But I keep coming to the same conclusion that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone and that there was no conspiracy. Gary Mack is less sure of that. The Warren Commission did not say there wasn't a conspiracy. They just said they couldn't find one. And of course, the skeptics out there say, well, they weren't looking hard enough. Well, that might be true. These stories about the Kennedy assassination will continue forever unless there's a breakthrough. And who knows what that might be. Next week, another case from the text files. This one is a grisly unsolved murder case from Houston. The Icebox Murders. I've never been able to understand how someone could commit an act like this and disappear off the face of the earth. An elderly couple found chopped in pieces in the icebox of their kitchen. Their middle-aged son, the only suspect, a shadowy character who may have had ties to the CIA. That's next Sunday night on Fox 4 News 